I've been looking forward to doing this story for a long time. Okay, ready? Behold, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, Volume 4. This book is super boring looking and also super important. The DSM, they call it. It is the reference that psychiatrists and therapists and insurance companies and drug companies all consult when they decide if you have a mental disorder. So did your insurance company kick in to help cover the cost of you going to therapy or your antidepressants? Uh, if so, this book and your diagnosis based on what's in this book is part of why. Uh, and it has a big cultural impact beyond medicine. A big part of how we define as a culture what counts as a sickness, what counts as a mental disorder, is framed by what's in the DSM. That's why it was a big deal in 1973 when the American Psychiatric Association decided that homosexuality no longer constituted a psychiatric disorder. They delisted it as a psychiatric disorder in the DSM. For decades, basically forever, psychiatrists had, with this book, said if you're gay, you're sick. You have a medical ailment, a mental disorder. There is something wrong with you. And so in 1973, when psychiatrists moved to change that, it caused a lot of controversy. One of the prime movers behind that change was this man, Dr. Robert L. Spitzer, a Columbia University professor and psychiatrist who worked on revising the DSM that year. In 1973, he argued for taking being gay off the list of mental illnesses by saying, quote, many homosexuals are satisfied with their sexual orientation and demonstrate no generalized impairment. It does not sound revolutionary now, but it, it was back then. Among the people rocked by this change in the DSM was an industry that claimed to be able to heal gay people of their supposed illness. Suddenly, these folks were being told by the American Psychiatric Association, hey, you are trying to heal people who aren't sick. The anti-gay, we can cure you folks did stick around for years, for decades even, but Frankly, they were on the fringes of quackery, of pseudo-religious, pseudo-medical, anti-gay politics. Until something crazy happened. In 2001, this came out. Can some gay men and lesbians change their sexual orientation? This was not published in some quack, fringe, wishful thinking, anti-gay publication. It was not a vanity publishing thing. This was published in a well-regarded, peer-reviewed medical journal called the Archives of Sexual Behavior. And this piece was not published by some anti-gay true believer who was trying and failing to pull on the guise of scientific authority to just justify being super anti-gay. Look at the author of this. Look, Robert L. Spitzer. That would be the same Dr. Robert L. Spitzer, who had been so instrumental in delisting homosexuality as a mental disorder in 1973. In 2001, 28 years after Dr. Spitzer told the country that being gay doesn't make you sick, he published this. This study, which says he studied a couple hundred patients and he found that you could, in some instances, pray away the gay. You could get rid of your homosexuality through therapy or something. He said some gay people essentially could be turned straight. The anti-gay groups, the being gay is a choice people, the you can be cured of your homosexuality folks, they were over the moon. Look at this press release from a pray away the gay group called NARTH, the National Association for Research and Therapy of Homosexuality. Their press release, prominent psychiatrist announces new study results. Some gays can change. Ever since this study came out in 2001, 11 years ago, Dr. Robert Spitzer's work has been cited as proof that if you want it enough, you can turn yourself from gay to straight. The Cure the Gay People have spent that last 11 years moving to the center of anti-gay politics in the United States. They have become as mainstream as you can get in the anti-gay political world. When President George W. Bush urged Congress in 2006 to amend the United States Constitution to make it anti-gay marriage, the Bush White House made sure that a contingent of people who specialize in supposedly curing gay people were in attendance at the White House announcement. This is a press release from Exodus International, one of the big ex-gay cure the gay groups. Quote, worldwide network of former homosexuals to take part in Rose Garden ceremony as Bush endorses marriage protection amendment. Quote, the lives of thousands of former homosexuals like me verify that homosexuality is not an immutable trait. Therefore, marriage is not a civil right to be casually granted to any group who demands it. So says Alan Chambers, president of Exodus International. You recognize the guy there on the right? That is Karl Rove. Uh, with the then vice president of Exodus International in a photo taken at the White House. The cure the gay people at the White House. 
This year, presidential candidate Michelle Bachman's husband uh, runs a counseling center in Minnesota that is reported to have tried to change patient, patients' sexual orientation. Marcus Bachman denies that that's a service that he offers, but frankly, it is rather convincingly reported in the nation and elsewhere. Also, remember the weird speech that Rick Perry gave during the campaign where he hugged that syrup bottle and everybody wondered if there wasn't something a little off about Rick Perry that night? Uh, that was a speech before a group called Cornerstone in New Hampshire, an anti-gay group in New Hampshire. Their research page of helpful links on the issue of homosexuality lists exactly four helpful links on homosexuality. Four helpful organizations, all of which are organizations that claim to be able to cure gay people, to be able to cure people of having the affliction known as the gay. The presumptive Republican nominee this year, Mitt Romney, his anti-gay politics are also now homosexuality can be cured politics. Uh, we reported on this on this show a while back. And the Romney's charity with the Romney's money supports a lot of conservative causes that the Romney's support. CNN did a report on this the other day, finding out that uh, this foundation has supported like pro-gun groups and the conservative think tank at Stanford and some medical stuff. But they also support, to the tune of $10,000 in one year alone, uh, a group called the Massachusetts Family Institute. The Massachusetts Family Institute is an anti-gay group based uh, in Boston, Massachusetts, that advocates all sorts of anti-gay causes. And that explains that if anybody is gay, well, you should quit that. Quote, we encourage the healing of individuals who wish to change their choice of lifestyle through the work of Exodus International, Love One Out, and parents and friends of ex-gays and gays. And how do these recommended groups from the Romney-funded organization propose that you do that? They promote magic therapy by which you can be cured of your affliction, like our old friend Richard Cohen advertised. Another technique, bioenergetics, designed to help clients release memories stored in the muscles, in this case by hitting a pillow with a tennis racket. I was angry at my mother, okay. so I started saying, Mom! 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 Why did you do that to me? What Mitt Romney has been funding as charity is actually advocacy of the predatory quack industry that sells parents on the idea that you can ship off your gay son to a guy like this and he'll ship him back to you straight. It was not an oversight that Mitt Romney's charity gave money to one of these pseudo-scientific cure the gay groups. It was not an accident because this is what anti-gay politics are like now. They, they have the you can be cured of the gay message right at the heart of what they do in politics. It has been like that since the bombshell Robert Spitzer study mainstreamed this kind of thinking back in 2001. It has been that way for 11 years now. It has been that way for 11 years until last week when all of a sudden it stopped being like that because last week Dr. Robert Spitzer made it known that he would please like to take that study back from 2001. He would like to retract it it does not mean what people think it means, and he wishes it had not been published. Last week, the American Prospect magazine published a remarkable piece of reporting, including the explosive revelation that Dr. Spitzer is renouncing this 2001 study that changed gay politics in America ever since. Dr. Spitzer says he wishes he could retract the study from the journal in which it was originally published. He says that efforts to cure gay people of homosexuality, quote, can be quite harmful. Acknowledging that he did not study a representative sample of people, but instead counted on people sent to him from anti-gay groups. Dr. Spitzer now says, quote, the findings can be considered evidence for what those who have undergone ex-gay therapy say about it, but nothing more. Dr. Spitzer essentially saying that study was not science. It was just a series of anecdotes. He's sorry it was published. He wants to take it back. So what does this do to all the cure the gay people? Do they go back to being seen as quacks? Or do Republicans keep inviting them to the White House and speaking before them as presidential candidates? What happens next?